Hello and welcome to my latest video lesson on Lady Macbeth from Macbeth, obviously. Uh, before I continue, just a reminder that there are uh, hundreds of video lessons like this one over on mrhonline.co.uk. Um, do pop over there, that, me, Mr. H. Okay, right, on we go. So, um, who is Lady Macbeth? Well, she's one of Shakespeare's most famous and frightening female characters. She's the ambitious wife of Macbeth who encourages him to murder Duncan to become king. In fact, she makes all the arrangements. She is his confidant, that should say. Is she an agent of the supernatural? Well, she calls on evil spirits to assist her, wishing she wasn't so feminine, connecting her to the supernatural and its evil. Some people would even say that she's the fourth witch. She is powerful in that she manipulates, controls, bullies her husband into proceeding with the murder of Duncan. Remember, Macbeth was this fierce, brave soldier we've met already on the battlefield. Um, so how powerful must she be if she controls and bullies and manipulates him? She knows his weaknesses and exposes them. Ultimately, she descends into madness, unable to cope with the guilt of what she's done or the role she's played in the murder of Duncan and maybe the, the, the growing distance in the, her relationship with Macbeth, which was once close. Um, I've just put a word bank up there for you. Um, language you can use when analysing Lady Macbeth. Ambitious, powerful, greedy, cold, calculating, manipulative, evil, duplicitous means you can't trust what she's doing or saying so she's linked to that theme of appearance and reality controlling conniving guilty agitated remorseful weak abandoned neglected isolated anguished false quick thinking obsessed not sure i'd like to be uh, uh, called most of those um so it give you some in insight into um her her experiences her character how happy she is and whether she made the right moves at the start. Because remember, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, the king was coming to their castle to celebrate the bat winning the battle against uh, Norway. So their star was shining brightly until ambition gets in the way. That old Hamasha fatal flaw. OK, some further observations. Now, this is important. Gender role reversal. Play was set in the 11th century. Uh, it was performed in the early part of the 1600s. Um, men dominated. Um, you know, what the man said went, went, women didn't really have a voice. Okay, so that adds even more um, intrigue and shock value to how powerful a character Lady Macbeth is in relation to her, her relationship with, with um, Macbeth and also in the eyes of the audience. She's taking on the more dominant role within their marriage, and this would have jolted with the Jacobean audience, expecting instead their women to be far more subservient. Even Macbeth compliments her by saying her mental strength makes her like a man, for they undaunted metals should compose nothing but males. Language she uses. She usually speaks in blank verse, which is unrhymed, iambic pentameter, normally reserved for the noble, more important characters. But when she sleepwalks, she is speaking in prose reflecting her fall from grace and her mental disorientation. It's a good point there. Look, do pause the video and take notes as you go. A 12-15 minute video lesson here is about 45-60 minutes of uh, revision time, uh, um, certainly according to the students that I've um, used these videos with before. Um, link her to the theme of appearance and reality. She drives this theme. She instructs Macbeth to look like the innocent flower but be the serpent under it. A great famous line, look like the innocent flower but be the serpent under it, ensuring that their plans aren't discovered. Duncan, Duncan even, trusts his fair and noble hostess, even as she plots his murder for later that very evening. So she's, she's disguising her true thoughts, linking to the theme of appearance and reality. In the end, she's described by Malcolm as Macbeth's fiend-like queen, associating her with evil and the devil. And in a society that believed in heaven and hell, where do you think she ended up? OK, um, quotations now. Um, I'm going to annotate these a little bit, but let's see if you can um, in interpret them yourself first. Yet do I fear thy nature, 
it is too full of the milk of human kindness. She's just received a letter from Macbeth uh, telling her about the witches and the witches' prophecies. Obviously, they've talked about this before and they're both quite excited. She says, I acknowledge he's got ambition. You are not without ambition, but I do fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness. Now remember, this is about Macbeth. Macbeth, who, whose sword smoked with bloody execution and who carved out his passage through the enemy uh, on the battlefield. Too full of the milk of human kindness. It's a different person she's describing, but she knows him like no one else. Um, this also implies about her character. She's far more callous than her husband. OK, unsex me here. This just is her demanding off the spirits, controlling the spirits. Remember, the Jacobean audience would have been terrified of the supernatural because they believed it was real. James I, even, he, he kind of was feared and f was fascinated by the uh, supernatural. He wrote a book called Demonology on the very subject. But she And here we have Lady Macbeth up on stage demanding the spirits, unsex me here. In other words, remove her femininity. Uh, make her take away any hint of weakness that she may have could be because she's going to need all the strength to convince Macbeth to kill Duncan. We've talked about the next one, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Links to the theme of appearance and reality. You should put tonight's great business into my dispatch. Leave all the rest to me. She's talking to Macbeth about the murder of Duncan, the worst possible crime to commit. Going against the divine right of kings, the belief that the king was God appointed. And here they are going against God and she's at the one in control. But screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. All this control and um, influence over Macbeth. Well, why doesn't she kill her, Duncan herself if she's so um, powerful and crazed and ambitious? Well, here's her explanation. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. Interesting because it does, it's a first hint that she may not be as powerful and cold and callous as she acts. She'll be as, she may not be, implying a softer side. And this manifests itself in her sleepwalking later on. Who would have thought the old man have so much blood? Um, so obviously plays on her mind. Another screen of quotations and again to pause. It will make us mad. She's telling Macbeth to stop. This is immediately after he's come out of the Duncan's chamber having murdered him, but he's carried the two daggers with him. Uh, they're the two daggers, by the way. Um, carried the two daggers with him, and um, he wasn't supposed to. He's supposed to leave them by the guards because they were supposed to be um, the guilty ones. But he's panicked. He's gone to pieces. He's losing the plot. He's paranoid. He's, he's hearing voices. And she says, stop thinking like this. It will make us mad. And that's irony because um, she's the one who ends up going mad, sleepwalking and ultimately commits suicide. She descends into madness. In the same scene, a little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? So if you imagine that or remember that, that blood is a motif for guilt throughout the play, she's saying she's now taken the daggers off Macbeth, taking control. Um, that gender role reversal still in full swing. She's brought the daggers back into the guards. She smeared Duncan's blood on the guards to make it look to make their guilt look complete. And then she's come back out, and her hands are covered in blood, just like Macbeth. But she's not losing the plot. She's not um, wailing and hearing things and um, uh, paranoid. Instead, she's very calm. And she's look, a little water clears us of this deed. How easy is that? But again, is it though? Because what does she do when she's sleepwalking? She's out, out damn spot. She's frantically rubbing at her hands, um, trying to get the blood guilt off her. So she dismisses this. Oh, and then what will these hands never be clean? Out damn spot, out I say. So there's the connection with, um, with what I've just been talking about. Dismisses the severity of the act committed, suggesting a quick wash of the hands will clear them of any personal consequence. This links to her sleepwalking episode when she's seen frantically washing her hands, trying to remove an imagined spot. Here's the smell of blood still. All the perfume, perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this hand. The same, same sleepwalking scene. Um, 
To bed, to bed, there's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. Obviously, now she's the one where Macbeth was panicked in the immediate aftermath of the murder of Duncan. Here she is now. Remember, the knocking in that scene of the murder of Duncan. Uh, Macduff is coming to call for Duncan and they're off on their business of the day. And as Macbeth and Lady Macbeth are... Um, um, cleaning, washing their hands of the of Duncan's blood. There's a knocking at the gates, and they can hear the knocking. And Macbeth says, "Wake Duncan with thy knocking. I would thou couldst." He's, he, his his regret, his his guilt, his remorse. Ah, oh, I wish I hadn't killed him. I wish he could wake up with a knocking, but obviously I know he can't because I've just killed him. And this is coming back to haunt Lady Macbeth, not Macbeth, but Lady Macbeth. Right. And I'm nearly done. Uh, exam relevance. Obvious one well, being any question on the character of Lady Macbeth. Um, but also, you can um, her relationship with Macbeth, so anything to do with that with his character, or specifically, explicitly about their relationship. Any question on tension and drama? What role would she have to play in that? Um, she could be linked to any question on themes of good and evil, ambition, appearance and reality, deceit, gender. It's an important one. Power, control. Um, and also, finally, the supernatural, um, sometimes known as the fourth witch. She calls on the spirits. She's aligned with them. She's uh, her, her language is quite graphic and brutal and dark. And um, and then how how would she have been perceived by a Jacobean audience? Right, that's me done. Um, don't forget, head on over to mrhonline.co.uk. I uh, hope you found this one useful. There's plenty more over there on a whole range of uh, texts, both in language and lit, and pretty much every exam board catered for. Okay, see you guys later. Bye.